this video we're going to make the clownfish version of a fish pot holder. And the pre-pattern is conveniently linked in the description. You can follow along from there. I'm going to leave a long enough tail to weave in. This will be the mouth opening. So the project, both fish, they work from the mouth down. And to start off, going to chain 15. Then from there, this is not a magic circle kind of round, which some of you might be happy about. I would have been, but I have found one that I like. So I don't mind a magic circle so much, but this needs to be open mouth so that we can put the you know, hook into the fish's mouth. So I'm going to slip to join and then try to keep this straight as best you can. And then work 15 single crochet around in that top loop. I've made my 15. I'm going to slip to join that very first stitch. And then I'll put a crochet marker in that slip. And now we're going to start the increase. And there will be three increases, so we're going from 18 stitches to 21 stitches. And they'll be evenly spaced around. So we have to chain one, two single crochet in that stitch that we slipped into, because that's still a stitch. One, two. And the other increases will be at the fifth stitch and the tenth stitch. Go stitch one. Two. Three. Four. Fifth stitch. One in there. And then a second one in there. Tenth stitch, we'll get two stitches in there. And then single crochet to the end of the round. Okay, so keep doing the increases as instructed in the pattern. And then I'm going to come back and show you when we start doing the color chain for the fun stripes on the clownfish. They're fun, aren't they? They always look so happy and cheerful swimming through the anemones in the, either in a fish tank or in uh, the ocean. Okay, I'm gonna slip my round and I'm just gonna keep going. So I will see you back. All right, I'm gonna change color round where I bring in the accent color. And you're not carrying the yarn, you're just dropping it to the back when you do this. So this is my slip stitch to start the round. Bring up my other color. And you have to introduce the yarn properly or else you're gonna have a little, you know, weird look right there. So this round alternates single crochet and a smallish puff stitch. I did not want the puff to be too puffy because that can be cumbersome in the kitchen, you know, getting caught on things. All right, single crochet one, yarn over, next stitch. We'll do the mini puff. One, two, and three. Pull through. This is not an increased row. The only rows that increase is the main color, the main body color. 
single crochet puff one two and three single crochet and puff all right so I'm going to finish this round and I'll come back and show you the next round of this because it is still worked in the contrast color all right so I finished this round I did my slip to join and on this row it's just regular single crochet all the way around again this is not an increase row this is just a regular row in the contrast color and this is how we'll be alternating so for the rest of the increase to get you know, the, sh the fish shape and then we go into the decrease down to the tail you'll be working the increase and decrease only on the main collar on the red or if you're using orange for more of a real clownfish look that's up to you um, and then the just regular count with the contrast color so I'm gonna single crochet around and work up some more and then I will come back and we will work the fishy tail okay, so I'm coming to the end of the stripe work of the body and if you saw the other fish this ends uh, this is going to be a little bit different to look more like a clownfish so with the striped fish the zebra fish the contrast color which would be this is the same all the way down through the tail but a clownfish has a white band before the actual fin flares out so I'm going to change back to the white off white in this case cut my red yarn pick up the white and then now just like with the beginning that was worked in single crochet we're going to go back to working single crochet so no more double crochet pull my red tight but save that red because the the fin is going to be red when we get to that oops I'm supposed to bring the white yarn up there tight and then just work the decreases as the pattern says as you're going around to get the taper down to the tail if you want you could add in um, two rows of black and then make the eye black because that really would look like a clownfish or if you just want to keep up with the whimsy you can make it as I've made it shown in the final image okay so just working single crochets following the decrease instructions and I'm going to close it up and come back and show you how to make the tail fin it's made exactly the same as the zebra fish was made very simple comes together in just a few minutes All right our fishy needs a tail so here's the mouth on the clownfish tail is white or the tail end is white and then now the tail is red at least the one I'm making you can do how you like so I've got my starting chain here and this is very simple we'll only be working in the back loops however the first stitch and wherever you're at with your last stitch of the row of the um, let's call it the bottom of the tail. So the top is going to be straight across and then the bottom will be the inverted arrow. So that bottom, regardless uh, going this way, coming in this way, you will still do a full single crochet, not a back loop only. Otherwise it's going to look a little loosey goosey. Okay, so the first row, just following the pattern here, I'm going to work. I put a full single crochet. Actually, no, I didn't because this is all back loop only. So yeah, first chain from the hook, just working this. Uh, this is the setup row. Work through, and this will come together in just minutes. It's a very small piece. 
watch your stitch count and then the pattern it will tell you how many stitches you'll have on each row so if you have to stop for some reason just go back and count your stitches and look on the pattern and see where you are at because even in you know 10 minutes of making this the phone can ring kids can cry someone comes to the door the cat jumps on the table and knocks your tea onto your project you know all the, all the things of life <laughs> when we're trying to do do our hobby so I'm coming to the end this is going to be the top of where the tail connects to the fish so this end will always be so remember the end with the starting tail will always just be straight there's no decreases increases nothing up there because it's going to attach here all right so i'm going to chain one turn work a full single crochet and then so i'm doing back loop only to get that ribbed look of the fish fin And then to do a decrease, we're not working decreases like we did in the actual body of the fish where you're doing a single crochet, two together. This will simply be ignoring the last stitch. Like it's not even there. to the end. You see here I have two stitches left. One, two. I just did this back loop crochet. I'm going to do a full single crochet in this stitch. I just ignore that one. Now another decrease coming back. Chain one. Skip that first stitch. So the pattern will say decrease, that's how you decrease. And then regular single crochet, and then back loop all the way up to the top of the tail fin, where I will work a full single crochet when I get there. So I just keep doing this, follow the pattern. Twenty-two rows of just a very few stitches so you'll be done in no time at all and then I will show you how to give it the fin shape and then how to attach it to the body of the fish pot holder I finished my tail and I've left a long tail the end of my tail I'm just gonna pull that through and then thread it onto the tapestry needle. And from here, I'm gonna work back and forth. The top of each rib. snugly. Just kind of gently pull the yarn through. And I'll pull it to get that nice fin shape and I'm going to have it uh, snug up to this size here. Right now it's a little bit bigger 
I'm gonna pull it just a little bit more snugly. same yarn. <coughs> going to just attach it. Just like this. So like that, I'll flip it over. It'll be attached and then we will move on to finishing the face. So it still needs to have the cute little eye put on and then the hook in the mouth, but that really won't take much time at all. So after playing around with attaching this with the red yarn, to get it to look even here, the red yarn was showing. So I'm going to go back in and attach it with the off-white color so that this stays really clean looking. I love the shape of the tail though. So yeah, that's up to you how you do your stitching, but you might find that it's more effective with the white. So I'm gonna weave in these ends first before attaching with the white. For my eye, I'm going to do a white outline. Then the iris will be blue and the pupil will be black. And I'm going to figure out which side I want to be the front. Doesn't really matter, I suppose. It's not this. Okay, I think I'm going to do a double length since I want the white to be kind of pronounced. I'll just do a creative interpretation of an eye, however you want it to be. Not this. So it doesn't come through. Get up two knots. So it'll be knotted on each other to make a bigger bump that won't go through that single crochet. around in there. Okay. We'll just work some sections as the outline for the eye. These are pretty big pot holders so you can have a nice size eye on them. Okay, I've got the white done. Kind of a diamond shape that I ended up with. That's okay. And then put in some blue and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to double over my yarn. Not quite as much, but you need room to pull and, and work it. And that again. And I'm going to cut all the ends at when I'm done with the eye and then secure them together. You don't have to weave them in because this is on the inside, no one will see it, but you don't want them coming out as you wash your, um, your pot holder. Although if they do, it's not really a big deal to put them back in, but we don't need to make extra work for ourselves, right? Get it all done right the first time. I 
think I want to fill all of the blue in and then have the, the pupil sit on top of the blue. And then I'll see how it looks. There's no right or wrong way to do this. So here I've cut all the strands and I'm knotting them together and then I'll trim these and just tuck them down in there. Alright, so let's get this hook in the fish's mouth so we can hang our fish. Now what I'm going to do is begin to crochet in some stitches. This will make the um, Oh, this will give the hook more support. Not that this is heavy, but chances are you're at some point, if not always, you're going to be hanging it. And to avoid that kind of stretched out look, this will help with that. So I'm going to start uh, three or four stitches away from the, um, where I'm going to put the hook on the mouth. This is my starting chain, so it looks a little loosey goosey. I'm going to go under that starting row. See how it was lifting a little? I'm going to go down a little bit lower these stitches. So the front of the mouth is going to hang open, it will be unworked. Get at least four stitches because the stitches I'm making right now is where the hook is going to go. I'm going to work four stitches on the back of the mouth, plus a couple coming around the side here. And so to attach the hook, Hook back here, come around, move some of these strands so you can see which one I'm working with. Okay, so with the working, oops, working strand, come through, you just slip stitch it on, and then that connects. And then start working into those stitches in the back. And I'm, I meant to say, I'm using a smaller hook here, four millimeter. Come up and stitch. And then go back into that same stitch and work another one. So you'll be working two connecting stitches into each stitch on the back of the mouth. So those four back stitches will equal eight inside of here. It could be a really nice, snug, secure connection. Three, another one in there to total four. Five. See why a smaller hook is helpful here. And then the last stitch. Seven stitches and another one in there. Eight. And here we have the open mouth. Looks like the fish is caught. And then I'm going to just get back down onto the mouth and crochet two or three more stitches to secure. And then cut the yarn and weave it in very well so that it doesn't come loose. And then your pot holder is done.